everybody, and welcome to um, our webinar, training you to put together your own great library event. Um, the first part of our training is going to tell you a little bit about what placemaking is and how placemaking can help you make your libraries even greater. So we're going to start with a very quick introduction into what is placemaking and the placemaking process and um, a little bit of a discussion on why libraries um, are such great community places from a placemaking perspective and how you can enhance what you're already doing with your library. So the first thing um, about placemaking is that, as the name suggests, it's really an approach to making public spaces better by focusing on place. And when you focus on place, um, you do everything differently and you see things in a different light. So um, the approach, the placemaking approach is not about projects and construction schedules and uh, working with designers, although all of these things may be part of it. But it's really about focusing on a place and focusing on what makes it special and unique in a community attraction. So. Um, in this slide, for example, you see a very um, classic neighborhood place. It's a bookstore in, in Brooklyn. And what makes it so great is, of course, that there's books, and I'm sure librarians would appreciate that. But um, it's also because the people who run the book bookstore made some very simple adjustments to their environment to attract more people. They put out benches. They have events. They have something to look at. So as you can see in this little less than a block area, um, you can count probably six, seven different people, groups of people doing different things. And that's what a great place really does. It gr brings people together, and it gives a variety of people something to do. So you have older people walking, you have kids learning to ride a bike, you have kids playing with dogs, you have people reading, you have people reading over each other's shoulder, you have neighbors meeting. That's what a great place really does, whether it's a street corner, um, a sidewalk, a park, a library, a city hall. All of these places can really be great um, if we look at them from a placemaking perspective. So play, what is placemaking? Um, for us at Projects of Public Spaces, uh, placemaking is most of all a process, and it's a collaborative process with people in the community um, coming together to create the great public spaces that give their community a meaning and a sense of belonging and a sense of being part of something great um, and exciting. So our Placemaking process or place driven process really begins with the place and the people who live, work, play, go to school um, near and around that place. We call them stakeholders, um, and it could be a variety of different people, but our first task is really to identify who these stakeholders are, who are the people in the community that need to be part of a placemaking process. We then um, evaluate the existing space the way um, it currently is, whether it's an empty lot or a failing park or a plaza that maybe doesn't get a lot of use. And based on that evaluation, we develop a vision for the place. What do we want this to be in the future? How do we want it to attract people, what function should it serve, and what is really its role in the community. And based on that vision, we develop ideas for short-term changes or experiments. Or in this particular case, we're going to talk with you about library events and how can they further a vision for a livelier, better, more connected library or park or even a parking lot. And based on these short-term experiments or events, hopefully um, we're able to develop a long-term plan or longer-term experiments that have um, a stronger significance and have a longer life and could really um, 
become a broader, longer plan for improvement and changes to the space. And of course, all of this is subject to ongoing reevaluation, to improvement, and to rethinking. And that is the beauty of the short-term experiments, which um, are meant to be temporary and not very expensive. Of course, um, there is cost associated to those, but um, they're not the same as the cost to construction or long-term changes. So the idea is really to give ourselves a little bit of space to think how we're using the spaces, what that looks like, uh, what the experience is like, and how we can make it better and let the space evolve um, with the programming and the people who use it. So libraries, as I'm sure you know, are great community places, and they can be even better um, as long as we um, give ourselves um, a little help and attract some partners and follow some very simple rules. So one of our most important rules about making a great community place of a, out of a library is that the library has an opportunity to offer a front porch um, to its users. So whether it's um, an active, you know, whether it's the New York Public Library with its great steps that it are being used for um, a variety of meetings and events and people just hanging out or something um, a little more modest, like um, the library in Princeton, New Jersey, that you see on the slide here. Um, what they did is they uh, renovated the plaza right, right outside of the library, and they built the community room in the library, which you see um, tables and chairs in front, that is actually accessible directly from the plaza. So on days um, and in at times when the library is not open, community the community can still use the community room because they have direct access. So they're providing this active edge feeding the outdoor plaza. And of course we want an outdoor space that um, is open longer. Uh, we want the library to have inviting entrances. We want it to be identifiable for, from a distance. Um, and for some libraries, it's kind of hard to go back on that because of the way they have been designed. So sometimes um, minor tweaks and changes are needed to make that front porch really work. And what we really want from the outdoor of the library space is to be flexible, to be a space that allows for changing or overlapping uses, a space that may have some infrastructure built in for programming, like a power source or a location for a movable stage or lights or other infrastructure elements that actually help and support use, a space that fosters fluid connections between indoor and outdoor, especially today when libraries do have collections, but they're also focused on a lot of activities, so it's not all about um, checking out books. And a lot of the books that are being checked out may be electronic, they may be related to um, other experiences that go beyond the physical paper book. And we also, of course, want to have the room to experiment with temporary uses and the room to experiment with um, fun stuff and stuff that is different and unique. So in this um, photo, you see the entry to a library in Europe. It's in Copenhagen. And um, what they did is they felt their library plaza was too gray um, and it had too much concrete. So they experimented with this um, path, green path to the library door and created this very green environment. So because their entry plaza was fairly flexible, they were able to do that without much um, trouble. We want to encourage seasonal uses and uses that change throughout the year, uh, whether it's markets or changing plantings or uh, 
Christmas or winter or seasonal celebrations or cultural and civ civic celebrations, great libraries um, are always able to support that, and the public spaces of great libraries can serve as a venue for those kind of activities and events. And finally, we know um, libraries are great at managing and organizing events, and a lot of placemaking is about managing a place and providing a venue and um, helping the library attract partners to help in programming, in providing more events and activities. So you don't have to do everything alone. Um, and there's partners out there who want to be part of this. So part two of our training is about turning your event into a great place experience. Um, in this section, we're going to um, take a quick look at what makes a great place and look at some examples of the elements that make this great place. Uh, we encourage you to review this um, section of the training with other partners and with potential stakeholders, and uh, we encourage you to use it for your or your own brainstorming sessions when time comes for that. So what makes a great place? Well, the most important thing um, of a great place is really what is happening there. So uses and activities are the most important element. And of course, um, comfort and image, how people feel about the place, how comfortable they are, how well they can use it. Um, those are very important elements as well. And it's not no good to have the greatest place in the world if it's really hard to get to. And sometimes we see that with um, places that are either accessible only by vehicle or are on a very busy street and can be ac accessed by on foot. So access is very important. Um, and the final ingredient of a great place is sociability. And sociability is something that happens spontaneously and makes a great place the place in the community where everybody goes to, where people feel they belong and they feel a sense of pride and ownership. So access and linkages. If we can't get to the library, um, it doesn't help us even if it's the greatest place in the world. And I'm sure you know that with um, youth or teens and tweens and uh, people who can't really drive for whatever reason, how limited all of a sudden their access to many things are. So we believe that great public spaces are public spaces that are well connected for more than one mode of transportation. But um, good access is also about providing good information, helping people orient themselves to the space. Um, making sure that the space is welcoming and enticing and makes you want to explore further. So information um, is a huge part of how we provide actually good access and how we link better. Providing facilities for bicycles is something that is not new uh, but luckily has like come back as a big thing um, in terms of supporting access. But also just finding our way to the door is something that is a big part of um, having great access and a good linkage to a public library and a great public space. So uses and activities, that's what we really want to talk about. How do we make a public space fun and vital and active and sustainable and attractive to a variety of people. So there is something for everybody to do in the space. So whether it's great events like this one um, and performances, whether it's outdoor movies and concerts, or whether it's smaller activities like games, um, portable or temper or permanent um, classes, dancing. There are so many ways to make a public space exciting and to provide activity into it. So once we know what we want to do, we want to make the place really comfortable and supportive and inviting for people. So 
comfort in image is really about amenities, or if you want to think of it as the furniture that's going to make your uh, public space usable and people-friendly and really inviting to a wide, wide range of people. So tables and chairs, especially movable, are a big part of making a place comfortable. Offering shade um, or other protection from the elements. Um, and sometimes you can make it fun, um, whether it's with just little blankets or bigger pillows, like in this example, or um, beach chairs. And it sometimes takes just some sand and beach chairs to make a place really fun and exciting. So all of these elements contribute to the comfort and the image of the place and who it attracts. And then finally, sociability. Sociability is the trickiest um, element to put together. You can't force it. But when we have everything else right, a place feels welcoming and interactive, and you see that people are proud and attached to it. And there is a diversity of people using it, and everybody cares for it. And if you want to think of it in a different way, um, a sociable place is the place where you um, take your friends or relatives from out of town to show them what your neighborhood or your town is about. So it's something that we can't force, but we can always work and strive for. And there's different elements that can help that happen, whether it's just a few books at a bus stop or um, a great event with music and dancing. It's all about coming together and making people from the community welcome and engaged and uh, feeling a sense of pride and ownership.